Welcome, my name is Colleen. And my name is May. And some of you will know us from our knitting podcast. And in that knitting podcast, Colleen and I will dabble in some crafts and we'll try different things. And on today's video, I'm going to talk to you about the craft that I did, and that was refurbishing a cutting board. And I put resin on it, and hopefully on this video, you will learn from some of my mistakes and maybe some of the things I did right. So, Colleen and I, we'll just get started. Well, here we are, Colleen. Now, I have already sanded before I decided to film, so a lot of the nicks and things that were there are already off, but I still have some sanding to do. Um, if you want them really a flat surface and you have a planer, you could run these through a planer also. Here, what I have done is I've taped them up um, on the back and on the front, so I didn't want the resin to run down the board. All right, that makes total sense. I want checking level. Yes, when you do resin, it's a self-leveling product, so you want to make sure it's level. And here I have um, my different um, resin made up, and I used micas to start with. And um, to be honest, I didn't really like the micas. They, did, they weren't dark enough. They were too transparent. Right, right. And so I didn't get it on video either, but I had gone over them, and I used resin with acrylic paint. Oh, okay. Um, you have to be careful as how much um, product you're putting in with your resin mixture because you don't want to have to change the dynamics of the A when you mix A and B together. Okay. So you can't put too much acrylic right. paint in. Or... So this is what I did. And those of you who work with resin are probably screaming at me to pour it on there because a lot of them will pour it on. Right. But I only made up so much. And um, I knew I was going to go over it again with another layer. I just kind of wanted to get a base of where I was going to go oh, with this. Right. Now the middle board's different, so is it bamboo? Yes, the middle board came from a dollar store and it was like three dollars. And I just wanted to experiment to see how the resin looked on a bamboo board also as I was doing this. And it, it, it turned out not too bad. But I'm still, a, I still like the natural wood look. I like it too, it looks yes. really good. Now also in hindsight, maybe on these boards, if I was gonna put the resin on again at the top, I'd have maybe sanded those edges so the resin would have poured over. Oh, okay. The that edges would make a little a nicer. Lot of sense. Yes. Like I said. That's a pretty blue. Yes. People that work with resin are probably screaming at me right now. I don't know. but And then I finally, at some point, get fed up with the stick. <laughs> <laughs> and But I'm kind of trying to blend in the colors here. Right, exactly. And um, But yeah, the stick just wasn't working for me. And I thought, well. Let's just try my hand in this at some point. The blending it in, uh, the stick was good for the blending part. Right, piece because you wanted the and make colors sure to I blend it covered. in. Well, you'll see later on in the video, I, I did go over it with um, the acrylic paint and, uh, and I made, and then I had some bubbles and I'll show you how I fixed those bubbles. All right. So this is much better for you when you're using your hand. Yes, I like that better. And again, it's very, very transparent, and uh, it just wasn't the look right. I was going for. No, so the, so micas. Would yes. you have to put more micas in if you were going to use them? I think it, I'm not sure uh, about that. That that's a good question. And again, I didn't want to put too much mica in because I didn't want to change the consistency. But when right. I did experiment with the acrylic, I was I much preferred the look. And the micas came in all different colors. It was great. Well, they look pretty, but I can see what you're saying is it's too transparent. You're losing some of the color there. Right. So here I'm doing the other one, and I did the same thing. Again, I knew I was going to be um, doing another coat, so I wasn't being too fussy. Oh, I see. I just wanted to get the colors in there. Now, you'll see those little yellow things that are the stand. Um, I bought those off of Amazon, and they've been great and handy for this kind of work. Because you want it to be up off the table right, so, it, so can it can drip, drip. Dra exactly. drip down. Now, will you have to throw out what that tablecloth? Yes. Okay. Now here is where I had some bubbles. I don't know if you can see it on the camera, but there was definitely a bubble there. And I just used 220 sandpaper and I just sand it off. So if you have bubbles and you have more than one, you can just go ahead and oh, sand wow, that, that off. Oh, that works great. Um, that'll come right off, but you have to put a clear coat on. And also there was a part that was missed. 
when I did that uh, coat with the um, acrylic paint, there was a part that was missed. So I was going to put a clear coat on this anyway. So this worked out quite well. So now I'm going to put this clear coat on to, to be finishing. And this takes a few days because you've got to wait 24 hours for it to dry. Mm -hmm. um, so it takes quite a few days. I mean, when you're in the video, it looks like it's happening all <laughs> <in> real <laughs> all time, but it isn't. And um, you're supposed to pick, mix slowly. And as you can see, I didn't really follow that rule. <laughs> but there wasn't very many bubbles in this. And oh, this is just white acrylic paint and my resin mixture. Okay. And, and that's going to be for the waves? This so. is the waves, yep. So what I put a, la a layer of clear down first, so the waves would kind of flow. Oh, and that's a fantastic idea. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, the stick was kind of going out the window at this point. I thought I'd just start pouring it on. And I wanted to make sure I got all the, everything covered so I wouldn't have the same issue as I had before where that one piece right. wasn't covered. Now, does this heat up on your hands at all? No. Okay. And clean up um, with resin. You had bought some baby wipes, and those were the best things oh, to excellent. clean up. Now, here I would just throw my glove out right. and then just wipe my hands with baby wipe, but anything else I would just um, use the baby wipes. It's, it's, they're great. And I'm just rubbing it in, making sure I get all the spots. This is kind of like the last coat. I'm going to do a layer of waves and then I'm going to call this a day on this um, and we'll see. Now, um, I think if you, this is my first time ever doing a wave and I think you would get your technique down the more you did this kind of thing. Oh, practice. And practice and learn what would work for you. Here, I think I would put just a streaming layer of clear again and then put the white just below it and then it would run Oh, through. that makes sense. Yeah. Now, how are you going to move the white? Um, the white is, what you do is, um, you kind of have a heat gun. And okay. you'll see in the videos as I go along here with this heat gun. But I want to take some of the bubbles off first. All right, that makes sense. Um, and then I will use the heat gun to, to move the waves because then I don't really want to touch it after that. Um, like I said, I think if you did the waves... Um, a more on a regular basis, I think you would get down a technique. I'd like to tr experiment with some different uh, ideas on how to do waves or check things out. Here I'm using a lighter and this just helps taking off some of the bubbles. Um, and you don't want to keep it in the one spot because it can burn the resin and then you Oh, I didn't resin. realize that. Mm -hmm. So you've got to keep it moving. And here I am just putting the heat gun on straight on, as you can see, and that just kind of makes the uh, resin more fluid. Oh, look at it move. And then I turn it over and it's a little bit more fluid to move. That looks fantastic. Mm-hmm. I like to do this in a larger area, like I was right. only on a small cutting board, so... But the heat gun was, those are the tools, the two tools that I kind of really we couldn't have done without I don't think because the heating gun helps with bubbles also oh fantastic and then I'm just peeling off the back again I'm using the heat gun and I'm just taking off that tape and it just comes right off oh that's amazing you would yeah. think that would be stuck forever I know but you don't want to leave it on there for days I don't imagine right, right? so and then I give them another really nice sanding get them nice and get all that resin off that maybe dripped on there and then once they've been sanded you, um, you wet them oh. a little bit you don't have to soak them you just right. need a little bit of water on there okay I just make sure the whole board was wet and that kind of brings up the kind of uh, the green. green wow um, look at the difference yep and then you let that dry and then you come back with the sand like a high sandpaper like a 320 would work i didn't have 320 only had 220 okay and so um i used the 220 and it came up quite nice so it's amazing what you did yeah so i'm pretty happy with the with the outcome 
here I'm using board butter and I made this myself and I used um, one part beeswax and three parts mineral oil and it's all food safe. Oh, excellent. And I really like that consistency. Now, if you want to make your own board butter, you can change up that ratio however you want and however you like it. I kind of like this consistency. It's a little thick. It's not too runny. Oh, that looks and wonderful. And it really Look worked its way to the board. Mm -hmm. I think if you had one of these uh, wooden boards or wooden cutting board or security board at home, I think what you could do is just make sure that you keep... Um, Keep it like this with the board butter. Right. It keeps it nice. Oh, look at that. So satisfying. Does it look satisfying? To you? <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> I know. And then you just so and this will just soak right in, and you can just wipe it off the next day if there's anything, because it it does do does well soaking in. And I think because of that step right. of wetting it makes a difference. Look at that. Mm -hmm. It's almost. It looks like you varnished it, even though you haven't varnished I know. it. I know. And there's a comparison. I did two oh, boards, so there was one with, and there's one without. Unbelievable. And there's the complete boards. I think they turned out quite well for my first resin wave amazing. project. And hopefully you will subscribe to our channel, MC Knitting Adventures. And um, it's just been great doing this for you, and uh, thank you. Well, thank you for watching that video. We hope you learned something, and until next time, you take care.